WHAS 11, weather first. We are taking a live look over Louisville right now. It's been another rainy night, as you can see with those rain droplets on our camera. And it's been another day of rain and clouds, but we're not done quite yet. Thanks so much for joining us here on the night team. I'm Alex Dieterer and for staying up with us a little bit later. We'll start with weather first and meteorologist Alden German. Alden, will we see much more rain tonight? Oh, we already are at the moment. We have some light showers that are pushing through the metro area at the moment. Earlier this evening, you probably even heard some rumbles of thunder. Our first thunderstorms of 2024 push through as well. A broader view shows most of this rain is along the I-64 corridor and in our northwest quadrant here between I-65 and I-64. No lightning this time, but it is some a fairly light to moderate rain that's pushing through the region. And you can see how it's kind of rotating around just a little bit as well. So we'll continue to have that over the rest of tonight. Some of those periodic showers. Temperatures aren't really going to budge too much, trying to dip to the uh, upper 30s as we wake up tomorrow morning, but we'll still have a few isolated showers hanging around even into the early afternoon hours. But we do have much drier weather coming our way for next week. I think you're going to like that extended forecast that's coming up, Alex. Thank you, Alden. New Albany police is investigating after a man was hit and killed by a car on the interstate today. Trimark says the crash happened just before 930 on I-64 just past the Sherman Minton. Police shut down the upper deck of the Sherman Minton while investigating. New Albany police say there have been no details about the man's identity and the case does remain under investigation. All new tonight, LMPD made several arrests today, including one in a deadly shooting outside 4th Street Live. Police have charged 33 year old Jordan Fields, who you see right here on your screen, for the shooting that happened last Sunday. Police say Fields fired 11 shots into Chad Smith's car, which was parked in front of the Chipotle on Liberty and 4th Street. Smith was hit multiple times and died at the scene. Today, police were on Garland Avenue when they saw Fields in the passenger seat of a truck. According to court documents, officers attempted a traffic stop on the truck and Fields jumped out and ran. That led to a foot pursuit. Police say while trying to bring Fields into custody, he resisted and even attempted to grab a responding canine unit's leg, trying to injure the dog. One officer suffered a broken hand, two detectives were scraped, and another officer suffered an injury to his shoulder. Fields has been charged with murder, possession of a handgun, resisting arrest, assault on an officer, and assault on a service animal. He's expected in court on Monday. Developing tonight, police have arrested two people in connection to a string of robberies over the last few months. According to court documents, Darius Penix and Sebastian Revels were arrested and charged with multiple counts of robbery for incidents dating back to December 20th. Police say Revels and Penix would use Grinder to lure unsuspecting victims to a home on West Broadway. Court documents say Penix and Revels would confront the victim when they arrived and then steal the items from the person. And in some cases, they took the victim's car as well. Both are expected back in court on February 5th. New for you tonight, a new group in Louisville has its sights set on holding leaders accountable and getting citizens involved in the governmental process. Inside the Southwest Library earlier today, dozens gathered for the launch of the Louisville Watchdog Alliance, setting high hopes for a better future for people across the metro. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie document the conversations underway tonight. Looking for a solution born out of a long-standing issue. This group grew out of frustration with the planning and design process and seeing how broken it is. Dozens gathered inside the Southwest Library for the launch of the Louisville Watchdog Alliance. So this is a citizen-led group uh, trying to educate um, other citizens on how to participate in planning and design, how to interact and communicate with their Metro Council people, and to advocate for uh, um, accountability and transparency. The goal Saturday. A whole slew of things. To educate every Louisvillian on how our government works, from Metro Council races to 311 and design and zoning processes. Louisville resident Tina Burnell believes the result will be greater accountability. We see a lot of unrestrained development going on in our community. We see um, affordable housing being used to push a lot of projects through that aren't being well thought out and considering the future. Burnell says while things may appear broken to some, this work here will lead to a future where power is concentrated within the people and not the government. But the important thing is that we're not going to stay there. We want to use that experience to, um, to bring about some positive change. 
During the hours-long event, dozens of attendees asked questions to shape a better understanding of how to effectively participate in governmental processes. As one of its first public meetings drew to a close, Burnell said the Watchdog Alliance is already making an impact. We have successfully um, fought a couple developments and um, a bait and switch, things that we think are not appropriate and not fair to the community. Um, that has been met with a lawsuit from a developer. But we hope to, to get citizens in this community a fair shake in the process. Our voices should matter. As this group works to sharpen their voices, hope remains high for a better future across the metro. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, the WHAS 11 team, on your side. For more information on the Louisville Watchdog Alliance or links to get involved, you can head to our website, whas11.com. A new amendment filed in the Indiana State House is looking to increase transparency related to fire and EMS agreements with local governments. New Albany State Representative Ed Clear filed the amendment to House Bill 1328 in response to the ongoing situation with Jamie Knoll. The former Clark County Sheriff and co-founder of New Chapel Fire EMS is facing 15 felony charges for theft, public corruption and ghost employment. Clear's amendment would require all contracts with fire and EMS services to be uploaded to Indiana's public access website. This uh, notably uh, would require all contracts or other agreements, not just those above $50,000, which is current law. Um, based on conversations I've had with uh, the Department of Local Government Finance, uh, unfortunately a lot of contracts aren't being uploaded now. The bill passed out of the Ways and Means Committee Wednesday and is now headed to the House floor where it's expected to be considered on Monday. This week, a bill aimed at preventing suicides among Kentucky's veterans advanced out of committee. House Bill 30 looks to make it easier to connect to services available to help veterans. Representative Michael Meredith says his bill is designed to reduce the stigma of seeking help and better tailor those available services to meet the specific, specific needs of veterans. We know that the suicide rate amongst veterans is much higher than the general population, and House Bill 30 seeks to start addressing the issue. I would say this bill is a first step and it's not a final destination. The bill is about breaking down barriers and creating communication amongst multiple government agencies and nonprofits. The bill drew bipartisan support and now heads to the full House for a vote. A state lawmaker wants voters to have a say about school choice in Kentucky. Representative Suzanne Miles of Owensboro filed a proposed constitutional amendment to allow state money to help fund enrollment at private and charter schools. Recent court rulings on the issue have said tax dollars must be spent on Kentucky's common or public schools and not charter or private schools. Supporters of the proposal say it would give families more options for their children's schools. Opponents argue it would divert badly needed money from public schools. Legislators would have to approve the proposal before it could go on the November ballot. Today, more than 100 families received clothing and other essential items through JCPS's clothing assistance program. The CAP program provides JCPS students with new clothes as well as a space for families to shop for gently used clothes and other essential items. Today was the very first giveaway in CAP's new warehouse. Everybody needs help, everybody needs something, and these are all families who appreciate coming here. Uh, we have had a lot of wonderful, generous donors contribute lots of brand new items all throughout the year. And this is just uh, that they donate these items to us with the trust and the expectation that we'll get it to the right people. For families to be eligible for the program, they have to have at least one student enrolled at JCPS. You're encouraged to contact your child's school and ask for the Family Resource and Youth Service Center. Today, Ben Richmond was laid to rest, surrounded by friends, family, and community leaders at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Richmond led the Louisville Urban League for nearly 30 years, being a voice for West Louisville, pushing economic development and championing diversity and inclusion across the city. And in a room full of people he touched and inspired throughout his life, it's apparent his legacy will live on. Photojournalist Elijah McKenzie and I share the beautiful remarks shared today on the man and leader Richmond, what Richmond was for Louisville. Surely everyone stands as a mere breath. And when God wanted to lift Louisville, God used Ben Richmond. Ben was a voice for the voiceless and the disinherited. 
And our city, our state, and our nation is better, Lord, because you sent Brother Ben our way. He served you, Lord, by serving other people. And he has left an example for all of us to follow. The Bible clearly teaches us that God works through human instrumentality. God gets things done through people. God has no hands to do God's lifting. We thank you, Lord, for his support system and those who did not abandon him in time of need. Shower upon them, O oh God, a double blessing. And to Miss Marie, what a saintly woman you are. Just absolutely phenomenal. We love you. Surely, everyone is a mere breath. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and give ear to my cry. In lieu of cards and flowers, the Richmond's family requests that donations be made to the Benjamin K. Richmond Legacy Endowment. Coming up, the race for the White House is narrowing down. Donald Trump is in Nevada, pushing voters to the Republican-run party. Meanwhile, Joe Biden and Nikki Haley are in South Carolina, pushing more votes ahead of their respective primaries. We'll take you to the campaign trail next. We are starting our new day here with some light rain showers pushing through the area, though a little bit heavy in a few spots up in southern Indiana. This will continue through the course of tonight before we start to see some drier weather. More on that next. Our Kentucky lottery numbers at Mega Millions, $311 million. Powerball, $164 million. The Kentucky lottery providing over $4.8 billion in grants and scholarships. Snowstorms to severe thunderstorms. We use our advanced technology to keep your family safe from whatever Mother Nature throws our way. Whether you're at home, work, or on the go, we make sure you have the information you need. Turn to the team that's always on your side. The WHAS 11 First Alert Storm Team, certified most accurate by weather rate. Our big truckload clearance event is going on this weekend only at Louisville Overstock. The direction interest rates are going these days, it's nice to know that Furniture Fair has your best interest at heart. Shop today and get 0% interest till 2027 with no money down. Get your best interest now, only at Furniture Fair. To celebrate the total solar eclipse on April 8th, Eclipse Roofing will be raising the roof with a free roof giveaway. Register to win at whas11.com slash contests before March 16th. There's the guy who said his trade-in was in perfect condition. Well, what do you think? Well, let's see here. It looks pretty nice on the outside. Oh, got a teeny tiny scratch right there and... Whoa, game changer. You didn't tell me that you had WeatherTech floor liners? Of course. I also have the cargo liner and seat protector. I mean, the carpet looks brand new. So what do you think of my trade-in now? It just went up. Way up. Thought so. Protect your investment. Order your American-made products at WeatherTech.com. Liquor Barn is the destination for all of life's special moments. Come on, I'll show you. Tailgate time? Yes. These ready-to-drink cocktails are a game day favorite. Miss my invite to the party? We're running late. We need a gift for our host. These gift baskets are curated by our experts. So who you guys got in the game tonight? Ours. And if you're in a rush, no problem. We'll deliver right to your door. The two Republican presidential candidates will not appear on the same ballot in Nevada. Donald Trump is urging his supporters to caucus for him in the Republican Party-run Nevada caucus on February 8th, while Nikki Haley will be on the state-run primary ballot taking place on February 6th. ABC's Allison Kosick has the details. After decisive wins in the Iowa caucus and New Hampshire primary, Donald Trump holding a commit to caucus event in Las Vegas, Nevada, urging Republicans to support him in the state's February 8th Republican caucus. With the help of everyone here today, we're going to secure a gigantic win in the 
Nevada caucuses. The event coming one day after a jury in New York City ordered him to pay E. Jean Carroll $83 million in her defamation case against him. Trump has said he will appeal, his supporters seemingly not concerned with his legal troubles. I would vote for Trump again, no matter if he's convicted or not. He's 100 percent my candidate. The former president taking aim at his Republican competition, former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley. She can't beat Biden. The polls are showing the most recent polls because she doesn't have Republican support. Haley campaigning in her home state Saturday, focusing on the economy. We'll stop the spending, we'll stop the borrowing, I'll eliminate the pet projects and earmarks, and we'll veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels. California Governor Gavin Newsom is also in the Palmetto State this weekend, stumping for President Biden. Newsom telling ABC's John Carl, it's clear this election will be a Trump-Biden rematch. We need to lift up the issues, the successes, this extraordinary successes of the last three years, the Biden-Harris administration, and then we drive contrast. We have the receipts. We have the best three-year record of any modern American presidency, period, full stop. The president hoping for strong support from Democrats in South Carolina on February 3rd to officially kick off his re-election bid. You're the reason Donald Trump is a loser, and you're the reason we're going to win and beat him again. As the first sanctioned primary contest on the Democratic side, Biden is seeking a boost from his base, especially among black voters. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, Alden, it's so nice to hear you confirm that we had thunder today because CJ Dewey and I were sitting earlier and we thought we heard something. I didn't know if we were going crazy because it sounded like thunder, but I yeah. didn't think we'd have it in January. Oh, yeah, we did have some uh, thunderstorms earlier this evening. Nothing was severe, but it certainly added to our already ample rainfall totals that we've had for the month of January. We picked up over half an inch here in uh, the metro, but Hardensburg about an inch of rainfall there and about half an inch in Litchfield as well. So more beneficial rainfall across the whole area, and it's just added on to what's been a very wet month for us, and we have have more rain still falling now. Just some light showers across most of the metro at the moment. A broader view shows heavier rain is to our northwest there, north of I-64 and west of I-65. Bedford, Paoli, Salem seeing some more of that moderate rain falling at the moment. And as part of a larger storm system, a pretty interesting one that you can see wrapping around and rotating. So we are sitting underneath pretty much the center of that storm. And look here in central Illinois, we even have a little pocket of some snow there. We're going to have to watch that carefully because there is colder air up here to our north and that could result in a transition to snow for some of our southern Indiana counties here for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and look at future cast. There's the center of that storm. It's going to be pushing off to our east here as we head through the rest of tonight. And as we see that colder air wrapping around on the back side of it, that's when we start to get that transition from rain over to a little bit of snow here. But notice that our air temperatures are above freezing, so I don't think we're going to have any accumulation with this as the ground is just going to be too warm and that's despite what could be a somewhat large area of some wet rain snow snowflakes uh, mixing in together and uh, making their way down to the ground that notice our temperatures again still above freezing. They're not going to recover too much tomorrow afternoon. I still think we'll be able to make it into the lower 40s, but it is going to be somewhat breezy. So kind of a bit of a raw January day for us. Those winds gusting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. Staying cloudy though as we head into our Monday morning and overall Monday will be a fairly cloudy day, but we should start to see at least a few breaks in the sunshine heading into late Monday afternoon and the evening hours, but we're not going to be done with the rain yet as we'll have another quick cold front and an area of rain showers, maybe some snow showers pushing through for Tuesday. We call this a clipper system because it just clips your area and then it moves out of here relatively quickly. You can see by late Tuesday afternoon already seeing that next round of rainfall coming to an end. So something your weather app won't tell you those rain snow showers, but no accumulation will be coming with them and we'll 
and will actually have some above normal temperatures next week. Something else to look forward to. So a chilly breeze for us today. Those temperatures only in the lower 40s, which is pretty close to normal actually, but it's just going to be cloudy for a lot of it and we'll see those showers through at least the first part of the day. Looking at the seven day forecast, 49 degrees on Tuesday when we see those showers returning and maybe a few snowflakes mixing in. And here are the first few days of February starting on Thursday will be in the 50s, which is running almost about 10 degrees above normal for us for the first few days of the second month of the year.